Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be covering what are build systems, what is Jenkins build server, and also I will explain managing build dependencies and Jenkins plugins. Guys, I have uploaded a complete DevOps subject tutorials. I will provide that link in description. You can watch from there. If you are watching this video for the first time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. First, I will explain what are build systems. Guys, build system is nothing but it is a software. By using the software, we can compile code and also we can test that code. If compiling and testing is successful, then it will package that code. That is nothing but it will create one executable file. Directly, we can place that executable file in server. Placing our executable file in server is known as deployment. So, build system is nothing but it is a software that can compile and test code to verify code is working correctly or not. And then it will package that code that is it will create an executable file for deployment. So build system is nothing but it is a software that will perform three operations. One is compiling code, next one is testing code and next one is packaging that code. That is nothing but it will create one executable file. Guys, there are many build systems that have been created for software development. And also sometimes you may feel like there are more build systems when compared to programming language. These are some of the example. For example, for Java code, you can use build systems like Maven, Gradle and Ant. For C and C++ code, you can use build system like Make. And for closure programming, you can use build systems like Lyngengen, Boat and Maven. And for JavaScripts, you can use Grunt. For Scala, you can use SBT. For Ruby, you can use Rake tool. And for shell scripting, you can use various kinds of build systems based on your needs. Guys, all these are build systems. That is nothing but all these are softwares. By using the softwares, we can compile code, we can test code and as well as we can package that code. That is nothing but we can create one executable file. By using all these build systems, we can perform these operations. Depending on your company and type of software that you are creating, you need to choose softwares. And some companies are creating their own build softwares. Normally, many companies will use only one build system for all projects. But it is not right because for example, let us say one company is using Maven software for all projects. But it is not right because Maven is suitable only for Java projects. It is not suitable for Ruby projects and JavaScript projects. For JavaScript, Grunt software will be best. And for Ruby, Rake software will be best. So, based on your project, you can choose different build systems. You should not depend only on one build system. As a developer, whenever you write code, at first you need to build that code in your own system. If build process is successful in your system, then you can place that code in GitHub. So all remaining employees can access that code. So as a developer, at first you need to build code in your own system. For example, let us say you are a developer, you are developing one project. That project contains code related to Java and as well as JavaScript. So now you need to build both Java code and as well as JavaScript code. In order to build Java code, you need to use Maven. And in order to build JavaScript, you need to use Grunt. So now what we can do is, now we can combine these two softwares and you can use in order to build your project. Combining these two softwares makes your work easy. So if you have to support multiple build systems, you can combine them. This makes things simpler and allows different build systems to work together. For example, one company want to build a Java project. Then in their system, they need to run this command in order to build Java project. MVN clean install where MVN stands for Maven. Whenever you run this command, at first it will compile Java code and then it will test Java code and then it will save executable file in your system. Next I will explain what is Jenkins build server. Guys, build system is nothing but it is a software and whereas build server mean it is a computer that is it is a system. If you want to build any project, then you need to install build system software in your build server. So build server is a machine that is it is a computer that runs the build process automatically. Build server uses the build system software to compile code, to test code and as well as to create executable files. So one of the popular build server is Jenkins and this Jenkins is written in Java. As in olden days before Jenkins, companies used one server called Hudson. Oracle company took this Hudson. In that company there is one creator called Koshuk Kawaguchi. This person modified Hudson server and then he gave new name. That new name is Jenkins. So this Jenkins server is updated version of Hudson server. And today Jenkins is more popular than Hudson. 
Jenkins is famous for building Java projects. Guys, not only Java projects, you can also build softwares made by other programming languages. Guys, installing Jenkins server in your system is very easy. For example, let us say I am using Ubuntu operating system. Then you need to run this command in order to install Jenkins. That is sudo apt-get install Jenkins. Whenever you run this command in your system, you can install Jenkins. And in order to start Jenkins service, you need to run this command sudo systemctl start Jenkins. Whenever you run this command, it will start Jenkins. And in order to access Jenkins, you need to open your web browser and you need to type this URL that is http colon double slash localhost colon 8080. You can access Jenkins in this URL. And in order to see status of Jenkins, that is in order to check whether Jenkins is active or not, you need to run this command sudo systemctl status Jenkins. Whenever you run this command, you can see status of Jenkins. In Jenkins, work is organized into jobs. Jobs can perform various tasks like compiling code, testing code, and deploying application and so on. Guys, in Jenkins, we don't call work as task. We call work as job. For example, let us say, I want to compile code and I want to test that code. So we call it as job. Guys, in Jenkins, we can automatically compile code, test code, and we can deploy code. I will give an example. Let us say I am developer. I developed a project and then I will place that project in GitHub. Now what I will do is, I will connect this GitHub website with Jenkins. So whenever any developer plays code in GitHub, automatically Jenkins will take that code. Then Jenkins will automatically compile code, test that code and then automatically Jenkins will place that code in server. So in Jenkins, we can automate jobs. For example, let us say there is another developer. He modified my project. Whenever he modified my project, Automatically again this code is compiled, this code is tested and this code is placed in server. Jenkins is especially used for continuous integration and continuous delivery pipelines. It ensures the software is quality and efficient. Guys, continuous integration is nothing but compiling code, testing code and then creating one executable file is known as continuous integration. And continuous deployment is nothing but placing our executable code in server is known as continuous deployment. So this entire pipeline is created by using Jenkins. Next topic is Jenkins plugins. Guys, there are so many plugins that you can install in this Jenkins server. Directly you need to open this Jenkins website and then you can install all plugins in that website. And some plugins can be installed even without restarting Jenkins. And one of the popular plugin is Git plugin. So from Git, Jenkins will automatically pull that code and then it will perform various operations like compiling code, testing code, etc. Among other plugins, we need the git plugin to pull our source code. Guys, these are some of the popular plugins that you can install in your Jenkins server. First one is git plugin. By using this plugin, you can pull code. And next one is maven plugin. By using this maven plugin, you can build Java projects. And next one is junit plugin. By using this junit plugin, you can perform unit test. And next one is selenium plugin. By using this selenium plugin, you can perform integration test. And next one is docker plugin. By using this docker plugin, you can place your application in containers. These are some of the popular plugins that you can install in Jenkins server. Next topic is managing build dependencies. Guys, whenever you develop any project, you cannot directly build and run that project. Before that, whenever any developer develop project, along with this project, you need to add some more files in that project in order to build and run that project. We call these files as dependencies. Only if dependencies are present, then we can successfully build and run that project. Or else we cannot build and run that project. Build dependencies in simple terms refer to the other software components or files that your application needs in order to successfully build and run your application. Some build systems like Maven for Java and Grunt for JavaScripts automatically create dependencies like POM XML file based on your projects. Guys, some build systems like Maven and as well as Grunt. These both softwares can automatically create dependencies based on your project. And for example, for C and C++ projects, there are some tools like GNU Auto Tools and Auto Config Tools. What these tools will do is, instead of separately creating dependencies, already some dependencies are present in these tools. So these dependencies are automatically added to C and C++ projects. Whereas Maven tool will create dependencies based on project, and whereas GNU auto tools and auto config tools, these tools already contain some dependencies. These dependencies are automatically added to all projects. 
guys in software development whenever you want to develop any software then you need to have clear idea about futures of that software for example let us say i want call her application then you need to know all futures of that application like like in that call her application there must be student login form faculty login form student attendance faculty attendance and so on so whenever you develop any project you need to know all futures of that project after placing your software in server if you miss any feature then it will be very tough to modify entire code again guys for example let us say i am developing project but i don't know what are the dependencies that are required for that project so if you don't know dependencies required for your project then you can use some tools like rpm where rpm stands for red hat package manager whenever you upload your project into rpm rpm will automatically provides what are the dependencies that are required for your project based on that you can create dependencies